This is Allison at Saratech, and today we're going to be talking about the results browsing object in the FEMAP API. So first, I'm going to start with a look at the documentation page for the results browsing object. And this object is used pretty much what it sounds like. It's used to browse results. It's not going to create results, browsing only. If you need to create your own results, then you're going to want to use the output and output set objects instead. But if you just need to process results or um, basically look at your results, maybe create reports from them, uh, the results browsing object is generally going to give you better performance than the output and output set objects. Um, basically what this object does is it creates a virtual spreadsheet. So if you're familiar with the data table in FEMAP, then it's very similar. You have rows, one row for each entity that you're interested in, and columns. Um, and these columns can, can be pretty much any output vector that you can pull from your model. So let's get into our example. So you can see here, I have this solid model. Um, I've run my analysis already. I have my results. Um, and now I want to spit them out into the FEMAP messages window down here. So in my API programming window, I've already created some variables for us to use. Um, I have this set object to hold all of the elements in the model. Um, I have this results object to hold the results, like we've been talking about. Um, and I have this return code. Uh, the return code I will use in this example, but uh, because the main focus is the results, um, I will not be checking that return code. Uh, just do note that it is good practice to check the value before you move on with your program. And I have a couple of, of other variables here that I'll explain as I put them to use. So first off, I'm going to take my set and add all of the elements in my model to this set. There we go. Now I want to add data to the results browser. So here my return code comes into play. And I want to add a column. So it's a little hard to tell from the autocomplete what exactly FEMAP is asking for here. So I'm going to go ahead and press F1 to open up the documentation page for this particular method. So you can see we have three inputs here, one for the ID of the output set to load, one for the ID of the output vector to load, and finally one to determine whether or not to add additional columns to accommodate the components of the selected vector. Um, and that's going to be important if, say, you have a output vector that has um, a magnitude and, and a direction. Um, for this case, I just want to look at the solid von Mises stress. So I don't really care about how the uh, how the columns are added. So first the output set, I only have one output set, so that's going to be one. The output vector ID for solid von Mises stress is 60031. And like I said, the columns aren't important. You know, I don't need to add any extra columns to accommodate vector components, so I'm going to set that to false. And back over to our documentation page. So now I have two outputs. The first output is the total number of columns added. So if you had this previous argument set to true, then you would want to know the total number of columns added, just in case it's not what you think it's going to be. In this case, it's pretty self-explanatory. We're just going to add a single column. The second output is the column indices. So let's say you want multiple output vectors to be in your results browsing object. So, you know, you do this add column call to add the first one, add one to add the second one. Uh, maybe you have another one where you're adding additional columns to accommodate components. Um, in that case, you would want to know what the column indices are so that when you go back to access the results from your results browsing object, then you know what column to look in. And that's where that's where the other two variables that I created come into play. So first, the number of columns created, and finally the 
indices of the columns added. Now I'm going to populate my results browsing object. So at this point, I've added all the columns that I want. So I can go ahead and populate it. Now I want to loop through my set of elements so I can get the results from my results browsing object and print them out to the message window. So I'm going to reset my set so I know that I'm getting the first element in the set. Now I'm going to set up a while loop. So while my set dot next. This will loop through until the end of the set. I'll use my return code again to make sure everything goes according to plan. And the get value method is how I want to get values from my results browsing object and put them in a variable in my FEMAP API program. So again, I'm going to hit F1 to bring up the documentation on this. And this one has two inputs. The first one is the ID of the node or element that I want. And the second one is the index of the desired column. So you'll remember when we added the column to our results browsing object, we got this output variable that tells us what the indices of the columns are. Um, so that's going to be an important variable for you to manage as you're adding columns to your uh, results browsing object. So again, that first input, the ID of the entity that we want data for. So I'm just going to get the current ID from whatever element is currently in our set. The index of the column. And finally, the output is going to be the value at that row and column. So now I have my value stored in my lmval variable. And let's say I only want to know about the elements that are greater than, let's say, 100. So I'm just going to put in an if statement here. If it's greater than 100, then I want to go ahead and print a message to the FEMAP message window. Maybe those are elements that I need to be concerned about, elements that I need to look more closely at. And that's all I need. Uh, because this is cut off, I'm going to go ahead and add the continuation character there. And we should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and press play. And now we have all of the elements in the message window that have von Mises stress higher than 100. So this was a pretty simple example. But in some cases, you're going to want to, say, output that to an Excel document. Um, print that out to a Word report um, or something like that. You may need to um, embed an image of the graphics window in there, um, and you can do all of that with the FEMAP API. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.